Ah, uh, sorry, we have some technical issue. Ouch. Well, finally. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Okay, fine. Finally, I thought we cannot make it today. <laughs> I was praying. I was praying. I was like, all right, Lavoy, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Okay. So um for everyone who's watching, so thank you for watching. And um last week I did three Facebook Live, um, but alone. But today I have a guest with me, which is Tequas Coverer. Well, for your information, Tikwa is an experienced advisor, business coach, and also the owner of a company named PowerPro. So, yeah, welcome, Tikwa, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. It's early in the morning, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. So, um. Tikwa, so may I know, like, how long have you been in business? Um, I would say about four years now I've been, been, in, been in business. So, yeah. Long, That's interesting. Long, working hard years. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what, what inspired you to, like, to start uh, your business right now? Um, well, I always wanted to be a business owner ever since I was little. So, you know, how when we're young, we dream of becoming um, either a lawyer. I dreamt of becoming an event planner. <laughs> and I always had uh, little things that I did on the side, which I did here. I did birthday parties, event plannings, and all my stuff. Then um, came a single mom, you know, at a young age. So um, my dreams for having my business uh was on hold so I had to get a job <laughs> and I became a job I became an admin which that wasn't something that I wanted to do but it kind of like fell in my lap so from there all the years of my journey of being on the job said I said that I could take the skill sets and I could move it to my business so that's how I got started um with my business just mm -hmm. thinking about all the skill sets that I had and that I can use and built my own company. So like meaning, like did you take like any any course before you started your virtual business? No, other than college, nope. <laughs> okay. I had learned um, by just watching and I think more my um, my willingness to want, it, want to own my own business. So when we first started, I actually started with my brother with the event planning business. So we partnered together to do that first. And then I said, hmm, I want something by myself with my own name. <laughs> and that's when I started Power Pro Assistance. So, yeah, no courses, no nothing. <laughs> okay. So, like, at the beginning, like, did you, like, start as a, like, of like freelancer first and then like after a few months then you uh, uh like start the business like then you start the power pro or like um you like start power pro even at the beginning um actually it was like years ago um a friend of mine she had a her own freelancing business so you know back in the like 90s early 90s i, I mean you had virtual assistants back then but it, we didn't have the technology the technology that we have today. So I was helping her and I, I didn't have a job at that time. So I was helping here and there because I had some technical skills. Um, then I got a job. And then years later, here I, here I am starting Power Pro Assistance. Now, I started Power Pro Assistance because I already had the skill sets. I put it as a supervisor on my job. Um, I already went through all the courses that my job had already paid for, which is all the technical stuff that I needed to, to, to learn to do my job effectively. Um, so I went through that and then also just going through um, other courses of my job as far as um, I did the yellow belt, I did the green belt, 
So I also put processes at work. I help put projects in place to make things better, um, to work e more effective and efficiently. So I said, you know what, I'm going to use the skill sets that I do at work, that I work for somebody else and put that into my business. So that's how PowerPool got, it, got established is through, through that. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So like you, 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 like you, you find out what are the skills that you have and then you start a business using what you already have, is it? Yes. So like how, how did you get your first clients before? Well, when you first start out, you always start out with your friends and your family. So that's how I started out was with my friends, my church family, and um, and my family as well. Um, because not you've been doing it all along. So whatever skill sets you have, you use it for you use it from your family. Your family called you up and say, "Hey, can you write up this document, or can you help me with?" Whatever skill sets you have, you've been using it and you've been doing it for free for, for, for years. So why not put mm -hmm. that skill set that you already have that you've been doing for free for other people and just, you know, put it into a business. So, yeah. So that's how I got my first clients and then through referrals. Mm, because like I, I also have like friends and um, like family that is doing business. But like I think like it will be like a little bit difficult to like suddenly charge them like instead of like previously we we do we did it for free right so suddenly to request charge like it, it's something difficult for me. Um yeah I guess it can be a little bit difficult but you you have to get into the mindset that you know it's a business now it's not something that mm -hmm. you you get for free. And if your friends and families want to go and pay somebody else, why can't they pay you and support you? So you have to learn how to change that mindset and turn it off and go to your family and your friends and speak to them. And it's all about communication. Everything is communication. You know, hey, I'm about to start my business. I know I've been doing this for free for you for a certain amount of time, but I'm asking you to support me now, you know, and help me to get my business up and started. Maybe you may not charge them full price, you know, and maybe so. I'm charging my family full price. <laughs> because if they get the same value, because I'm going to do the same thing that I do for my clients, I'm going to go above and beyond for you. So if I reach out to you or if you need something, then why not pay for my services? Because if you go to somebody else that you don't know, you're going to pay full price, right? You're not going to say, oh, give it to me for free. So it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a mindset thing. Yeah, interesting. So like uh, a few of my friends, like they are asking me like how to start business. So I told them like, just list down the skill that you have and then like start start telling people that you are offering this, that service. And yep, I think like it, it sounds easy, but normally people like have difficulty to find clients and yeah, getting client is like the, the toughest, the toughest part in a business, right? Um, It is. When I first started, um. I can say that it wasn't really that difficult for me because like I said, I have friends and family and people who refer mm -hmm. to my business. I always had someone who was tagging Power Pro or saying, oh, I know someone who can help you. Um, but when I started coaching, when I well, actually when I started my business, it was more of referrals first, right? And then when I was using social media, because I wasn't a social media person, I like to meet people in, in person, like networking events. So most of my clients came from networking events. I would travel to Florida, travel to Las Vegas, and I would go to these workshops and these women events. And I would tell everybody about my services. It was a lot of people who didn't even know what a virtual assistant was or what a virtual assistant did, you know, and virtual assistants been around for years. Okay. Um, so that was an opportunity for me right there to share that with them and then also get them signed on with my company. But the thing that you have to do when you're starting out, you have to know who your target audience is and you definitely need to have a perfect client avatar. If you don't have that, then you're gonna have a difficult time uh, gaining a client or attracting a client because we don't wanna chase clients, right? We wanna attract them mm -hmm. and that's what I do, attract clients. Yeah. So, like, meaning when it comes to avatar, like, do you, like, 
like because like when we started business right like when when we are new like we kind of like testing we like we we can't decide like what is our niche like because we we know everything we know healthcare we know real estate everything so like do you have like any tips on how can we niche down like like our our niche okay um actually i just talked about that so about niching down like say you know health is very broad you have so many things in health you have so many things in in real estate it's just broad so you're going to have to like um hone in on your skill sets what are the skill sets that you have that you love not the ones that you you know that you are good at and it's like ah, i really don't like doing it because you want to get into something that you want to wake up every single day doing and you don't mind doing every single day. It's like you wake up and say, like, yes, okay, I got to do this for my client. Not, oh my God, I know this, but uh, I can do it. But, you know, this is not something that I really like. So what you do is you write down everything that you do. Write it down, do a brain dump and write all your skill sets and put them in categories. If there's, uh, some things that you really don't like, put that in a pile. The things that you probably weaken, but you want to strengthen, put that in that in that pile. And then the things that you are strong at and you love, that's the pile that you want to work with, right? So when you niche and down, let's hone in on that one skill that you can uh, make marketable. Or if you don't have a strong skill and it's in your weak area, then perhaps maybe you need to go and uh, get to take some courses to strengthen that. So for example, if you're doing video editing, right? And you know that you're good at it. You love it. You determine that, wow, this is something that I want to do. So then that's when you go and you invest in yourself and you, you take a course on um, advancing that skills in video editing. Not only that, you also need to know and do your research to see if that skill set is in demand. So I think a lot of people get tripped up with it where it's like, oh, I know how to do it. I love doing this. And then when they get out there, it's like, okay, nobody wants the service. Nobody is looking at me. It's because that service is not in demand. If it's not in demand, then people are not going to pay for it. So you have to do your research as well. Yeah, that's interesting. And like like right right now, I know that your your company is focusing on administrative, right? So like, because like, when when we go online, we can see like a lots of people can do administration. So like like it, it's almost like a skill that everyone can do it. So like how how like do you do you compete with other people that offering the same service? Um, everyone has their own unique skills and their own special mm -hmm. things that they do. Um, there are a lot of other virtual assistants. I I don't call it competing. Um, even though they mm. competitors, right? But you mm. have to you have to identify what's special about you, what's different about your company and about how you do things. Because your clients that you attract are your clients. Their clients is who they attract. Okay, their clients may not be my clients. So it's maybe that one special thing that you do that clients love. So my thing is that you can't worry about how many other virtual assistants are doing the same thing. You have to just continue to work on what you have to do to attract that client. So just like, you know, going live, maybe that's something that you never did. So perhaps maybe you need to go on live and talk about your story, talk about how you got started, talk about um, teach people what you know, you know, not everything, but teach them, give them some tips so that they can see you as the, the authority in your niche um, show up. If you don't want to go live right now, because you know, some people are shy. I remember when I was shy, I'm, I'm an introvert as well, but it took time. And it also took the mindset in order for me to come on live. And although I was nervous, I kept doing it all the time until it became natural to me. So you just have to push yourself a little bit further just to show people what you got and what you're all about and that I can help you, you know, with that. Yeah, so yeah, that's interesting. So meaning like for those who like, who want to start a virtual business, first they need to like 
identify their own skills and then let their family and friends know about it and then like find their find their uniqueness what can attract people and start to go online like to go live like I'm doing right now is it yeah but you know when it comes to life it's like you know like I'm doing right now so later when I rewatch this this video I will like yeah, I, I will like hate my, my myself because like it, it's imperfect and yeah but like like people always say that we just need to get started and don't wait until everything is perfect so that's why I'm doing this um mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah Tikwa, thank you for the for the sharing and like um may I know like what like when we when you first started this um, virtual business, like what is like the biggest challenges that you faced before? Um, the biggest challenge was getting my systems in place. Um, to, so I can give my clients like that awesome experience. So it took a lot of trial and error to get to that place. Like I think the most challenging was finding the tools that I needed in order for me to make things easier for my clients because I come from a corporate world. I know how mm -hmm. to, you know, to, um, to support my clients at work, you know, through the, the systems and the software and all in the, in the, in the system that I created for myself because I've been there for over 20 years. So when you have your own business, it's like, wow. Okay. So what do I do now? even though I've been doing it for so many years, it's like, okay, so what do I do now? Where do I start? You know, it's just finding out what those tools are, um, what software to use, what platform to use, because there's different platforms and you could go into groups and you can ask them, but then you have like a hundred people that says, use Trillo, use Asana, use this. It's like, okay, <laughs> so which one should I use? And then you try it. So, and then you may like it and then you may not like it. But it's all it's all trial and error. So I think that was one of my biggest um, challenges is finding the right tools that was right for my business in order for me to create those systems. Mm, yeah. So like, what about like if the the person is like consider as an IT savvy where they are like familiar with all the system? Do you think that they will still have the same uh, problem? Um, perhaps, maybe, I mean, they can be tech savvy and not know how to create a system as far as from the beginning to end, because my thing is that in order for you to do that, you have to create a um, workflow for yourself. Like if you start in your business, you have to think about what do you want your clients to experience, right? So like, say, for example, like my specialty, my, my, business signature is um, executive assistant, right? So I know that with my clients that what's important to them is that they don't want to do administrative stuff, right? They don't want to have to fill out no forms. They don't want to have to do no calendar and all that stuff, right? So when I do my discovery calls, right? Although I need to know my clients, they still have to fill out a form, a questionnaire so I can get to know them prior to our discovery call. So what I do is I make them feel comfortable. I, I let them know, hey, thank you for opting in to my consultation. Uh, I'm so excited to meet you. I know that you're a busy business owner, but there's a form that I sent to you via email. And if you could take like 10 minutes, I know you're busy. You know, you just want to make them reassure them that you understand, right? But at the same time, I need this information, <laughs> You know, and they appreciate that. It's like, okay, wow, all right, I'll take the 10 minutes and I'll fill out the form. And then it won't be such a, a job for them. Like, oh, I got to fill out this again. All I want is a VA, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I understand what you're saying. And then they fill out the form. So all my clients fill out my form and then I'm able to do my further research on them, whether, you know, I have to go on their social media just to find out if they, they are a good fit for me you know, what they're all about, their values, and then also find out um, if I resonate with them. What was that one thing that connected me to them? So that's what I, I normally do, yeah. Yeah, that's very useful because like, yeah, I, I've been doing this business for five months 
and I never like give that kind of form to any of my clients because like normally we just like want to go direct direct like to the problem right so yeah this is like very very like important tips so thank you for sharing <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. Okay. So thank you, Tekla, for your time. So like before we finish um our quick chat, like our Friday chat today. So like, do you have like anything you want to say to all of the viewers who are interested to start a virtual business, but they like, they like scared, like like they like they don't know how to to expect um in the like the journey. I'm sure. Okay. So my thing is. The one thing that I always um, advise all my clients is start a journal. If you are afraid, write down why you're afraid. You know, write down your dream, write down your success, write your success story, because that is going to motivate you. When you write your success story on what you, what success look to you, what your successful business look to you, then when you go back and you read it, you're going to be like, okay. I need to get myself together. Put it somewhere where you can see it all the time and write, write your fears out, write it out. And I know that as me, as an introvert and growing up as being extremely quiet, cause I was extremely quiet. It took me a long time to get out there, to get on live, to be, at, to um, be honest with you. And I had people who pushed me. It's like, you gotta go live. You gotta do this. And that was the wrong approach for me. It was like, no, see, now you're really making me scared because you're pushing me to something that I, I want to do, but I'm, I'm not ready for. But be ready and don't let nobody push you um, without you being ready yourself because you have to journal, you have to get to know yourself, and you have to build up your own confidence within yourself and believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then nobody's going to believe in you. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, correct. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much for today, Tikwa. We learned a lot and I hope that all the viewers learned a lot too. So yeah, so maybe we can like, maybe we can like talk again maybe next time in the future. I hope you still like uh, interested to to yeah. have chat again with me. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. write me okay. now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you too.